Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get accepted in medical school and other professional programs. Today on MCAT Bytes, we're diving deeper into the intricate dance of chromosomes and genes during recombination. It's more than just a shuffle. It's a symphony of genetic innovation. So let's get started. Beginning with chromosomal choreography. Our genetic information is stored in genes on chromosomes. If you've made it this far on your MCAT, this is not news to you. Sometimes genes stick together due to proximity. We call this genetic linkage. But nature also has mechanisms to mix things up, shuffle things around, creating genetic diversity through various forms of recombination. And boy, oh boy, does the MCAT love to test on recombination. Probably the most often tested is good old crossover in meiosis. This is very classic. During meiosis 1, homologous chromosomes can exchange genetic material. This process introduces new genetic combinations and is a key player in the genetic diversity of sexually reproducing organisms. That's us. There are some other pretty big mechanisms you're going to know for the MCAT. We talked about crossing over, where in this example you can see, let's say mom's gene is pink, dad's gene is blue. Crossover, we get a little bit of dad on the mom and a little bit of mom on the dad. How about transformation? This is bacteria's favorite way. Some bacteria can uptake foreign DNA from their surroundings. Once incorporated, the DNA can replace a segment of the bacterial chromosome, creating a new recombinant bacterium. It's nature's way of letting bacteria sample genes from their environment. Next, a more sinister way of transformation is transduction. Viruses, especially bacteriophages, can mistakenly package bacterial DNA and transfer it to another bacterium during infection. It's like a genetic version of the message got lost in translation, leading to new bacterial gene combinations. So we see this scary looking bacteriophage in pink land on a virus. Maybe it accidentally sucks up some of its the bacterial's DNA, then leaves and attaches to a new bacterium where when it gets infected, it infects it with some of the DNA from the original bacterium. And if the second bacteria survives infection, boom, you've got genetic recombination. And just for clarity, it's not literally that the same virus is going to do this. It's going to be offspring of this virus that go in, pop out. So don't be confused thinking it's the same virus that is infecting a bunch of different cells. Next, my personal favorite is conjugation. Think of this as bacterial handshaking or bacterial sex. Here, two bacteria form a connection, and one transfers a piece of its DNA to another. The recipient can then integrate this DNA, leading to genetic recombination. And something the MCAT seems obsessed with is naming what we call this connection. Well, it is called the sex pilus. This is definitely an Anki card you're going to want if you don't already have one. This would be a great screenshot to take right now. Some relevant vocab and understandings you're going to want when you're thinking in terms of chromosomes is about genetic linkage and distance. The chances of genes being recombined during meiosis depends on their distance on the chromosome. Closer genes have a lower recombination likelihood, and this insight gave birth to centimorgans, a unit representing a 1% chance of combination between genes. So let's zoom in here. So these two genes in white, they're pretty close to each other. So because they're so close, when crossing over occurs, it's pretty likely they're going to still be together. But if we look at the very beginning, these two genes are pretty far away. So when we do have crossover, it's very likely they'll be gone. They'll be on different chromosomes. The implications of this is pretty huge. One is general evolutionary advantages. New gene combinations can offer survival benefits. Two, genetic mapping. The study of gene co-inheritance can help map their locations using centimorgans and math, something biologists typically love. Next is disease understanding. Some genetic diseases can be studied via genetic linkages. I just wanted to give you one example problem on this already long video. Given genes X and Y are 15 centimorgans apart on a chromosome, what is the likelihood they'll undergo crossing over. And let's draw this out while you ponder it. So here's one chromosome. Here's a nice picture to help you think about this. Let's put a line here. Maybe let's say that these are 15 centimorgans across. Well, centimorgan, straightforward actually. So 1% recombination probability. So the answer here is 15%. The world of genetic linkage and recombination is a marvel, showcasing how life ensures stability yet allows for genetic novelty. As you tread the path of medicine and research, 
embrace the adaptability and wonderful world of genetics. Stay curious, and until next time, may your studies illuminate the mysteries of life, genetics, and epigenetics. And make sure to sleep. See you next time.